hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. Thank you everybody for your contributions i appreciate it let's keep it going donate to the super chat donate to the paypal donate to the cash app it's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow let our voice be the voice the preeminent voice in black america so don't you expect stuff like that so don't i give you what you expect and what you need and what you want okay because you deserve it because you treat me well <laughs> so, this is some sage for your blood clot. Right now, right now she and I are negotiating. I'm trying to get up to some dances for me. Some of them sweet, sexy, Latina booty dances. said she want to take some photos in her new bikini. So I don't mind being the photographer. But go ahead. Do you care the photos, mommy? Sí, okay, no problem. Yo estoy listo. Yo magnífico. Yo similar de photographico profesional. Sí, sí. Yo estoy listo. Ahora, okay. I got to turn this off and take some pictures. Tú listo, mommy? Sí. Ay, wow. Wepa. Mami, que lo que? Wow, wow, wow. All right, give me a minute. I'm gonna come back. I, I gotta take some pictures. I got some work to do. I get ready. I, I, give me a minute. I'll be right back. Hola. Hola. Ella es mi um, hermano de Colombia. Sí. De nombre es de, de Palanca. Hinta Palanca. Explain for me. Diana. Yeah. Ana. And Ana. Ella es su hermana. Sí. Y vivo aquí, aquí en Colombia, ¿no? Sí. sí. Raza Palenquera. Ah, Palenquera. Sí. ¿Dónde está, uh, ¿Dónde está Palenquera? Juan María La Baja. Okay. Gracias. 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 Let me tell y'all a little bit. I don't eat much in the night. No. When you eat much in the night, you sleep. Very good. 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 Very
What's up, what's up, what's up, you guys? This is Dennis Sperling. Welcome back to the broadcast. I want to thank you all for being here today. Big shout out to Swing Out Museum. Let's see who else we got up in here. Uh, I, more of my members we got in here, man. We got to check in, man. What's happening? What's happening? What's happening? <laughs> yeah, man, I've been on my bounty hunter for about two or three weeks now. It's been very productive. Those of you guys who understand what I'm saying, you understand. If you don't, you don't. But uh, it's destiny to be paid out here in these streets, man. And I'm doing what I'm doing on these YouTube streets to make sure we get justice. But uh, that's another subject. We'll have that conversation another day. Right now, I want to give a big shout out to all my people. Shout out to Wrench Turner. Uh, let's see who else we got up in here, man. I don't, I don't think Wrench Turner, Wrench Turner. I didn't know you had didn't have a wrench, man. We got to get you a wrench, baby. Hold on a minute. Let me get wrench turners, uh, get him the proper apparatus so he can help regulate the uh, re regulate the chat room in here, man. Let me make sure we do that. I don't know if you have one or you don't, but I don't see you. Uh, you don't have a pre. You don't have that tool with you. Oh, you do. My bad, brother. But um, anyway, the thing I want to talk to you guys about the most obvious is that uh, abortion has been uh, officially deemed illegal in the United States, okay? Now, here's something that I don't think you guys understand about abortion, and I want y'all to, I'm gonna help y'all out because I wanna make sure that my guys are properly educated and why this is important and why this is not our fight. It never has been our fight. And in fact, we as black folks, especially black men, it shows you just how ironic this is. Now, what I want you guys to understand is that the whole abortion thing came about because a woman named Norma McCorvey, also known as um, Norma or uh, Jane Rowe, she falsely accused a black man of taking her sexually, okay, without her permission. All right. And, uh, you know, and she did that just so she could get an get the abortion in Texas, right? Think about it historically. This is a white woman accusing a black man of R A P I N G ing her during a time when we had really high racial tensions, especially in Texas, right? So this woman, Norma McCorvey, she's not a hero, right? She shouldn't be. We shouldn't be celebrating this. Remember, this whole thing was born upon a lie a lie that black men had to bear. That's what I want you guys to understand. So when it comes to the, the discussion, the motivation behind this whole abortion law was racism, not women's rights, okay? The fact that a black, a, a white woman was forcibly, or was, was about to be forced to have a black child. And by the way, uh, it was too late for her to get, uh, 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 it was too late for her to go ahead and get the abortion anyway. So she was forced to have the baby, gave the baby up for adoption. But the bottom line is, man, we had to bear the burn of this. They don't teach you that in history. Nobody ever talks about that. This woman, they treat this woman like she was a hero. This woman lied. And let me show you something else. Because I want y'all to see what I'm, I want you to see exactly what I'm saying. And I know we having a blackity black moment. I get it. I know I got a lot of Kevin Samuels fans in here. But this is the truth. And this is the type of, you want to understand Kevin Samuels more, you got to understand the, uh, what black men in America have had to deal with. All right. And this is one of the things, this is why that man spent years yelling at black men and screaming at black men and, and then spent the last two years of his life yelling at, 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 at black women. Jane Roe recants RAPE claim. The woman whose case prompted the landmark Supreme Court decision legalizing and this is the Washington Post, man. This is not Uncle D making this up, man. The woman, um, uh, the, the woman whose case prompted the landmark Supreme Court decision legalizing abor uh, abortion says she falsely claimed to have been raped in hopes of winning an exemption from Texas law banning the operation. The new account by Norma McCorvey, who was called Jane Roe in 1973 abortion case, Roe v. Wade, came under an interview with, uh, came during an interview with WUSA TV here. The station re released a partial transcript last night, okay? I found out I was pregnant, though I, through what I thought was love. So she was messing around with a brother in Texas, okay? 
But Corby said, I told the doctor that I wanted an abortion and I did not want to carry the child for economic reasons. Despite her claim to having been RAPED, she was unable to obtain an abortion. McCorvey had the child, which she, was, which she gave up for adoption. A lot of women did that back in the day. A lot of white women had some little children. You think all these little light-skinned babies running around here are because of white men? No, it's a lot of these white women voluntarily had sex with black men and then gave the babies up, man. How cold of a person do you have to be to do that? Especially a mom. So, I mean, she, she says she repeated the RAPE story because she was bitter, very bitter. Look what a woman would do when she bitter, man. We know women lie. And this is proving it. There's so many stories and it's so easy to lie on a black man. But see, now guess what? What happened to black men is now happening to all modern men. Look how easy some of these white guys are losing their jobs. Job, losing their companies, being booted out of companies they created, losing their careers. Senators being removed, comedians, actors, white dudes, powerful men. That's why it's important that all modern men find common ground and begin to stick together. Otherwise, guess what? Divided we fall. Largely, all of our interests are the same, fellas. White, black, brown, Hispanic. But look what this woman did. We're we going to go back to Jane Roe in a minute, but we need to always remember the whole point of having something called the manosphere. The black manosphere, manosphere, whatever. Because we need to be able to constantly share these stories. Look at this. It took almost 50 years to undo the damage that this lie caused. And here's my question. Can we ever undo the 20 million black baby boys and girls that were aborted because of the lie that this one white woman spewed about this black man who she was having a, a relationship with? Can we? No. Here's a crazy thing. And I'm going to put this link in the chat room because I want y'all to have it. It's not me making this up. It's not, this is not, I'm not, this is not wishful thinking. This is not being over the top. This is basic history. But guess what? RAP, we, RAPE was never an issue in the Supreme Court case in which the justices declared that the woman have a constitutional right to abortion on demand. Let me tell you why. Because see these two lawyers up here? They knew she was lying. They, they had to know. That's why they didn't bring it up in court. But they knew they had an activist group of judges that would read into it and say, yeah, you have a right to privacy. Which never existed in the Constitution but which has been the foundation for so much other case law that has come out. But the bigger point is this, fellas, and here's what I want you guys to understand. People are no longer just, they're no longer just believing her anymore. How many lies have been caused because we just believed her? We just believed that Jane Roe. How many lives, how many unborn babies have died, white, black, Hispanic, Asian, otherwise, have died because we just said, let's just believe her? I want you to think about that. This woman flat out lied because having a, uh, having a baby, especially a biracial baby, from a relationship she had with a black man would have been financially inconvenient. And because of that, literally millions and tens of millions of other black babies have had to die because of that. And this is what you all support. This is the law that you all support. The law that allows a certain medical procedure to kill children. You brothers, make sure 
when people ask you to support women's rights and when they ask you to talk about this abortion in your opinion, you make sure you tell them the true story of Jane Roe. You make sure you tell the true story of what this woman did. Norma McCorvey, remember that name. This woman is, in, is the reason why we have had more babies aborted in the past 50 years than we had died in the Middle Passage as black folks. Now, again, I know I'm having a blackity black moment. For all you Kevin Samuels fans, I know, hit the KS button. I know. I know. Hold on a minute. Give me. You don't went crazy over here. Hold on, hold on. There we go. All right. But again, like I said, I'm entitled to a blackity black moment. Kevin Samuels and I were different men. I had great respect for him. But he was a nice guy. You know, and he held back a lot, despite what y'all think. Kevin didn't tell you all the stuff that he really thought. But I don't have that type of filter. Matter of fact, my broadcast used to be called unfiltered. <laughs> but the greater point is this, fellas. It, it sets the climate, and I want you guys to understand something, okay? And this is not an anti-woman message. This is a reality. We Women, y'all have been out of pocket for a minute. Can we agree? And people are no longer just believing women, right? Because they see the damage that it's going to cause. Being a thought that thought lifestyle is about to become real inconvenient for you ladies. Now, what's going to happen as a result of these traveling abortions? You can no longer just go down the street. Pretty soon, you won't be able to order them pills from Canada, get them sent to you in the mail. What's going to happen? They're going to have to start offering travel packages, a, a travel abortion packages. Just so you chicks who are down here in the middle of America fly off to California, New York. But here, let me tell you something. Don't be in Texas. Because if you abort, if you're pregnant and you abort a baby without, uh, 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 or let me say it like this, if you abort a baby, you run off to another state, they'll put you in jail here. When you come back, they'll track you down. And here's another thing, fellas, and I want you to listen very carefully. Let's say you get a woman pregnant and she decides she wants to abort that baby. If you're in Texas, you can literally call, have her arrested, tried, convicted, and sent to prison. That's how quickly these women's rights have melted away. Because why? Because it was men that gave them their rights, and that was men who were taking their rights away. Because they abused it. And let me tell you something else. It's not just the men that recognize that these women are out of pocket. It's other women that recognize that women are out of pocket. I want you to check this video out. Fuck y'all didn't think that a Father's Day was going to pass about a bitch blessing your motherfucking timeline today. Here's an awful fact for some of you fucking kids. Anyway, this is all about winning for you bitches. This is all about competition. Because y'all too quick to bring it. Y'all too quick to want to bring the fucking bullshit. That's why niggas all bring no egg. No, it's never been an even playing field. You always had praise for failure. Y'all be the main bitches that be out here on social media talking about you expecting a father. Farmers, y'all was the first transsexuals. Fuck all that other shit. Cause y'all, y'all wanted to be a mother team. It's no I in team. It's we. It's we. In the best interest of the child. If you can do that, then you're being a great mother. But if you ever make a decision in the best interest of fucking talking about, it's gonna be some hurt motherfuckers this Father's Day. Deuces. Man, I just wanna extend a huge shout I wanna give a big shout out to my guy, MS Delta. Man, we gotta run this commercial for you, MS Delta. Thank you so much for that contribution. Uh, let me see what we got up here. We got a hot one over here for you, my mind. You know, the commercial fun is always popping around here. Bam. <laughs> I'm 
Praise God. Praise God. Shout out to MS. So we're talking about what you saw earlier was this young woman basically say, look, the jig is up. Ladies, you're not going to be able to run that game. Nobody believes you anymore. We know you've been lying. And this is it's ironic that we've been talking about winter is coming all week. Matter of fact, it was the Godfather, Kevin Samuels, rest in power, that told you that winter is coming. Now, here's the thing. A lot of y'all didn't believe that. A lot of you guys say, oh, no, it's never. Who knew it was going to come this quick? What am I talking about? What am I talking about? Let me let you see another video. I'm concerned about the gas prices, but what you really need to be concerned about is what your food pricing is about to jump to. Okay? Listen. Calves and babies are just now being born. Keep that in mind. So the cost to raise them hasn't hit yet. This bale of hay last year was four bucks. Bag of grain last year was six bucks. This trunk full in here last year would have cost me $14. Today, $20 for a bale of hay, $18 for a bag of grain. I got two bales in here. It's $58 worth of food. Last just my chick, just my goats and my horses, two days. That's it. Wait until the the prices catch up with your slaughter market when we start rendering animals in the fall. Prepare for seventeen dollar a pound chicken, twenty five dollar a pound bacon, thirty forty dollar a pound beef. It is coming. It's not a joke. Please be cautious. Please prepare. I understand people. All right. So I hope you listen carefully. These that's information coming from the people that raise our food. And she's not talking about two, three, four years from now. She's talking about in three or four months after the summer when the, when the, when the prices kick in. You understand what I'm saying? Now, let, let's, let's do a little math. Work with me. Where my mathematician's at? Okay. So right now you're paying about $5 a gallon. That's just for you to get back and forth from work. I'm just talking about you and your private uh, your own private life, you know, stuff you pay right now, you're paying about $5 a gallon. Okay. Now that's about what 18, let's say your car takes 18 gallons to fill it up. That's about $90, uh, $90 a week, right? $90 a week times 52. You are looking at $4,680 in gas alone. Now you like, okay, I can handle that. Now how much is your rent, fellas, ladies? How much is your rent? Tell me what the average price for rent is. I ain't paid for rent in like 17 years. I paid my house off as quick as I could. As soon as I started hitting licks, that was the first thing I did. How much is, how much is rent these days on average? Tell me how much rent is for a two bedroom place. How much is it? 1600, my man put came up with 1600. So let's write these numbers down. We wanna keep it accurate. Of the, you know, let me, let me, let me slide on over here. Let me get my pencil, my legal pad. That's what I do. So you paying 14, we'll say $4,680 a year for gas. All right. Somebody said, if somebody said it's anywhere from 15 to 2,000 to $3,000. I mean, I guess it depends on the lifestyle you live in. You want to live, we'll say. We'll, and we're going to go cheap on them. All right. What we'll do is we'll split the baby. We'll say instead of 15, we'll say uh, 1750. That's how much you're paying for your two bedroom home. Multiply that times 12. That's 2100 or 21,000. You like, I can handle that. That's 21,000. You, you can handle that, right? That ain't a lot of money. You know? Keep in mind, the average black man in America makes $52,000. The average white man makes 52, uh, I'm sorry, 42. Uh, the average white man makes 51. We're not talking about us, fellas, because generally men are less expensive than women. We're talking about these lovely ladies because that's what Kevin was talking about. We're already in a situation where nobody's going to really want to believe them anymore, right? You already got that situation popping. We got a whole nother situation where you got young men aged. We have more men who are virgins now than women. So what does that tell me? That tells me the young dudes are like, ah, whatever. I can live with it or I can live without it. It's no big deal. Okay? 
Now, we've already talked about gas. How much is electricity? Somebody, electricity, gas, uh, water, all your utilities every month, fellas. How much is that? More or less, for your, for your apartment, how much is that? More or less, single, we're talking about single living. We'll say, can we, can we say what? $300, $400. Uh, we ain't even got to the car note. My man talk about car notes, but we'll throw that in there. Car note, $400 a month times 12. That's $4,800 a month. Car note. Okay. All right. We still here. Let's, let's keep talking now. This is important. We're doing the math right now. Somebody said two fifty dollars for the car note. We'll go for We'll add four fifty. dollars That'll be the car note and the insurance. We'll, we'll pay that, even though that's a really small car right there. I would say that's a very tiny car that you're riding around in. Okay. Now, we haven't allotted for taxes. You know what I'm saying? We're going to pretend like y'all just ain't pay your taxes. How about that? Okay, so we got we got gas for a year. It's 46. We got rent. We got car note. Okay, well, what about, what, what else do we got? What, well, let's see. Uh, we'll say utilities. We'll say you pay $300 a month in utilities, and, and that's that's a year-round thing. I mean, all year. It's only $300 a month. You, you live in real cheap. $300 times 12. We'll say that's $3,600, okay? You working a full-time job, you're making $42,000 a year. No, nah, we, we don't have internet. Now, y'all talk about internet. Food? What you mean food? We can't afford food. Food? Did you not just hear what this woman said? Let me run this back to you. You can't afford food. I'm concerned about the gas prices, but what you really need to be concerned about is what your food pricing is about to jump to, okay? Calves and babies are just now being born. Keep that in mind. So the cost to raise them hasn't hit yet. This bale of hay last year was four bucks. Bag of grain last year was six bucks. This trunk full in here last year would have cost me $14. Today, $20 for a bale of hay, $18 for a bag of grain. I got two bales in here. It's $58 worth of food. Last just my chick, just my goats and my horses, two days. That's it. Wait until the, the prices catch up with your slaughter market when we start rendering animals in the fall. Prepare for $17 a pound chicken, $25 a pound bacon, $30, $40 a pound beef. It is coming. It's not a joke. Please be cautious. Please prepare. I understand. All right. Did y'all hear that? How many chickens do you buy for your fan for yourself? Let's say you eat one chicken a week. You got a two pound chicken. That's $35 for a chicken. And you need four of them for it to last you a month. Imagine that. Are y'all seeing what we you get this? That's $140 for four chickens. Think about that. Now let's add up the rest of this stuff. Okay. Cause I want you, cause it, I, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna land this plane in a minute, but I want you guys to understand something. What we're really looking at right now. Because the cost of living is going up and your wages are remaining the same. Okay. Now I'm pretty sure most of you guys, you're going to be okay. Because you guys have, you know, learned to live in boxes. Okay. Now at this point, if we, and we haven't counted entertainment, movies, none of that year for a gas, year, a year's worth of gas at $5 a gallon. And you need four fill ups a month. Uh, or, or I'm sorry, fill up a week to get you back and forth to work. That's four thousand six hundred eighty dollars. Rent at seventeen fifty is twenty one hundred dollars. I'm, I'm sorry, twenty one thousand. Your car note and your insurance four thousand eight hundred. Your utilities three thousand six hundred. That comes to thirty four thousand eighty dollars. That's before you pay taxes. That's before they take the money out for of state taxes. How are you gonna get food with that? Where the ladies at? I want you to look at some stats with me, ladies. You don't have the simps that you used to have before. Let's look at these stats. I want y'all to pay very close attention to these stats. Black women, white women, all y'all, I want you to listen. Can y'all see that screen? Let me see if I can make this screen a little bigger because I want y'all to get this full effect. Okay? I want you to get that full effect. Can you see that? They have it. They have 
the amount of money women wait, make divided up by states. The highest earning women in America are Asian women. And, 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 and it's broken up by state. Let's pick Alabama. Shout out to Alabama. Okay. White men in Alabama make, uh, um, well, well, white women in Alabama make $35,000 a year on average. How can they afford to pay for what, what I just talked about? This is in Alabama. And this, and your bear, before you even get food, you're going to need to pay out 34000 That's Alabama. Now let's slide down to California. $51,782. Now, if you can find an apartment, a two-bedroom apartment in L.A. for $1,700 in an area that won't get you shot, uh, a shot at every day, you go right on ahead. But the average woman in California makes $51,782. Colorado, $43,000. This is before you buy food. This is what if you have a child? How much is child care? You understand what I'm saying? Now let's go down here to black women. Now I just gave you white women and, and Asian women, which is about the same. Black women in Alabama only make $28,000 a year. How are you going to live? Black women in California only make on average $43,630 a year. How are you going to live? You still got to pay taxes out of that $43,630. How are you going to live, ladies? How are you going to maintain that strong, independent life, that out, strong, independent, I don't need a man life? Somebody saying Uncle Sam is going to save him. With what money? How are they going to save them? How, how is that going to work? We got less money going in. And, and more mouths to feed. How's this going to happen when, when, when you, we're about to go into a recession? Do you see the quagmire that these lovely ladies are in? Here's another thing. The brothers are not saving men in general, are not saving women anymore. There was a time where there will always be a simp around the corner to come save you. All you had to do was smile and cook, cook them a plate of Neck bones and collard greens. Tell him how handsome he is. Pet him on his bald spot. And he'll come through for you. Right? That's all you lovely lady. He, he, that chocha was gold. All you had to do is throw that chocha, that, 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 that wop up in the air, and it'll turn to gold for you. Instant payoff. That's what, that's right, right? I'm telling you the truth, right, ladies? But that's not the reality that we live in anymore. That, them big, them hey, big head texts are not going to get responded to anymore. The dudes are different now. They're not going for it. These young boys especially, they're different. They're not checking for you anymore, ladies. Did y'all not see that video I put up the other day? Well, the young lady said, hey, they're different. <laughs> Let me let you look at it again. Maybe you missed it. Basically, like, I always be asking my friends, like, do y'all feel like the value of women to guys have went down or guys just don't, you know, respect us, appreciate us how they used to? back in the, the 80s and the 90s you know like, like women control the like literally you know because i can say this now but i only say that because of the status like we make it hella money just like you but as far as a, a man literally worshiping the ground a woman walk on it's kind of rare these days we're running out of that um and it, it's kind of scary in, in society today. And I don't know, I might piss a lot of people off talking about this, but this is just conversations I be having with my friends. But guys don't appreciate us. I don't know. I don't 
know what it is, this might be just something I talk about on my, maybe the first topic I talk about on my you? podcast. Because, I don't know, it's just a little weird these days. It's like we got to fight for a spot in these eyes. Or they want to put, I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to shut up. I'm going to save this for my podcast. Because I know I got a podcast coming out here. We all about to be acting normal. Um, I got a podcast coming. Stay tuned. But yeah, I don't know. That's going to be the first topic I talk about, though, because it's real different out here. But we do run the world, for sure. We do run the world still. Um, we, we control the world. I feel like we, the, the reason it's spinning, women are taking over day by day. And that's just all I'm going to say for now. It, all right, so it, it, here's the thing, uh, guys. What she's saying is true. And on top of that, there's stats to back it up i want you guys i want to introduce you something it's on my uh community tab and what this is saying is young men driving the decline in sex the share of men and women between the ages of 18 and 30 and this is from the washington post okay and this is something that came i guess it came out back in 2018 more or less uh because of Tinder and these online dating sites, men start having less sex because women could pick and choose the dudes they want. They have more access to more men. You know, now you can meet somebody in New York and you way out in Miami or LA and get flued out, right? That's what the ladies are doing, getting flued out. Y'all hit put flued out in the chat room. Flued out. How do you spell that? Is that wasn't in my English class? Flued out. Where are all the ladies at? You got flued out. And so the dudes in your area are not really having sex. Let's look at this. 28% of the men at the age of 30, guess what it's saying? They're still virgins. Whereas only 18% of the women are. You understand? Think about that, man. That's crazy. 18 to 30% of men, is, and it's a rising number, they're still virgins. And I hope I'm reading this correctly. Correct me if I'm wrong. I don't mind being corrected. Either it's saying they're still virgins or they've only or they haven't had sex, I believe, in the past 12 months. I think that's what they're saying. Women, on the other hand, 80% are getting bashed all the time. But what's going on is men are getting used to not having sex. They're just playing video games, they're hanging out at the smoke shop. Uh, they working out in the gym. But the most important thing and what you guys need to understand, fellas, is they're no longer making women their primary focal point and objective. They've literally gone their own way. These young men are choosing not to have sex. So it doesn't matter if the, the, the women out there trying to sell that WAP for $40 and some chicken wings. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter because the dudes aren't buying. So what does that do? That leaves these women with a couple of options. They can either try to make more money, and I don't see how you do that when you got a job shortage and limited time in the day, or they try to try to get the money from the government, and the government really doesn't have it to give. On top of that, what I see coming is a bunch of Republicans taking over in the midterm. So all they're going to do is cut welfare, cut these social benefits. So what does that mean, fellas? What do you think that means? Well, it means you guys are going to get a lot of big head text, but it also means a lot of these women are going to go unanswered and they're going to have a long, hard winter. We are looking at a long, hard winter for these lovely ladies. Now, guys, I'm going to be honest with you. You really can't expect uh, a lot of sympathy for yourselves. Most of you guys already know that. You have realized that 
if you haven't by now, you understand that you are pretty much by yourself when it comes to survival in this world. But at the point where society says they've forsaken the women and the government's like, well, we can't afford to take care of you. You're looking at pandemonium. You, you're looking at, you, it's going to be wild in these streets out here. I didn't think it was going to come like this. I used to, rip, I mean, you know, I mean, look. I like Kevin Samuels. I love his work. I didn't listen to him every day. You know, some of you guys know his talking points better than I do. Most of y'all do, in fact. I would hear him say winners come. I'm like, man, get out of here, man. You're talking about winners come. I'm be good. I didn't even know it was going to be like this, man. That farmer, that lady who grows animals, is telling us that by the fall, when these, when, 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 the, think about it, when the farmers and the people who grow our food pass down their cost of doing business to the consumers, we're looking at paying. How much was it? 30 or $17 a pound for a chicken? $17 a pound for a chicken? The average chicken is about what? Two and a half pounds. So you paying 52 bucks for a chicken? Remember you used to go up to Walmart when Super Walmart first opened up? You could go down to Super Walmart and get, and get a... a, a, a a bag of hind quarters, hind uh, quarters for like 10 bucks, five bucks, and get a chicken for like two bucks. Can you imagine paying 50 something bucks for a chicken? How many chickens do you need to feed your family? $40 for a pound of steak, $50 for a pound of steak. That's 80, $100 for a little steak like that. How are you going to live? Some of you are like, well, I'm going to be a vegetarian. Okay, but it costs energy to grow the vegetables. It costs energy to grow wheat. And right now, what was going on in Ukraine and Russia, who are some of the biggest wheat suppliers in the world, the price of wheat is going up. And that's the mainstay. They need that to feed the animals. So what's going, what do you think is going to happen? It's going the wheat growers are going to say, well, look, I get it. I feel sorry for you. But these people over here are willing to pay more for their wheat so they can feed their cows than you are. So guess what? We're going to raise the price. And if you can't afford to pay three, four, five times more for that box of cereal that you could before, well, you're just going to have a problem. This is what we're looking at, man. I'm even thinking about it, and I make money. Like, damn. I mean, the idea of paying 50 bucks for a chicken, one chicken, that's ridiculous. And this is what this lady is saying is coming. Okay, I got it. I make well more than $30,000, $40,000 a year. What about these ladies who don't? What do you think they're going to start doing? You fellas, knowing you have nobody else you can depend on. What are you going to start doing to prepare for this financial winter? Because again, on this page, we don't talk to ladies. We just talk to the fellas. Kevin Samuels tried to talk to him. It didn't really work well for him. They tried to destroy the man in his, in his, at his death. I'm not wasting my time. I'm sorry. But when we come back, what we're going to talk about is how modern men can deal with this financial winter that's coming. Y'all make sure y'all uh, hit the like button. Y'all make sure y'all hit the thumbs up button. We got 500 people in here. We got 218 likes. Let's get these likes up.
Hey, if you're enjoying the content here at Dennis Sperling Unfiltered, make sure you support it by like, sharing, and subscribing to the channel. And also, hit that little notification bell in the corner so that you'll get notice of each and every one of our live feeds. A bit more truth on dating. The reason why I have a Ugandan queen and I don't have an American woman is three reasons, okay? Number one, American women are addicted to Instagram. You hear what I'm saying to you? I want a real love. I'm not talking about likes. I'm not talking about follows. I'm talking about love in real life, okay? And if you want real love, then you need to go to Uganda. Next thing, America is ate up with the hookup culture, all right? You know what hookup culture is? That means you sleep with somebody one day and then you sleep with someone else the next. I'm not about that hookup culture. I'm a one woman man. That's it. Okay. My third reason, and this is it. And I'm really tired that I have to do these videos for y'all, but this is the truth. Okay. So please listen and listen good. The last time those American women, they want a career. They want to be the CEO. You know what I want? I want a woman that's going to care more about the family than I about the pocketbook. You hear what I'm saying out there? Listen, I want a woman that's going to take care of the family, that's going to take care of the kids, that's going to be a mother, that's going to be a beautiful wife. That's what I want. And I, other American men want it too. And that's why I got me a Ugandan queen. And if you listen, and if you listen good, you go to Uganda and get you a queen too. Don't make me make another video. <laughs> Oh man, I, I saw that. I had to put that up. I'm gonna incorporate that into my uh my uh my uh, uh commercial database, man. I, dude is funny. He meant that though. That was from the heart. Shout out to dude. Got him a Ugandan queen. I ain't mad at him. I'm not mad at him. He doing his thing. But uh the thing is, guys, if y'all appreciate what I'm doing, y'all gotta get the likes up. We only got 281 likes. I'm gonna run another commercial. You gotta get these likes up. It doesn't cost anything to like. You know, I know y'all like the commercial. It takes me a lot of time to get this stuff done, man. Y'all make sure y'all show appreciation by getting the likes up. Mi amor. Solo bien. Mira, ay, tu muy bonita. Oh, si, sí, yo bella tu cu. Ay, no, no quiero. Mami, yo estoy un poco borracho ahora. Un poco. Sí, un poco. Yo, pero no más vino tinto para mí, no más. Yo quiero más. Mi amigo, mi amigo. Sí, Mi amigo dice es es el vino tinto barato. Tú necesito otro tinto americano. Muy difícil conmigo. Ok, ok. Yo me gusta mi. Yo me gusta y no problema. ¿Qué tú piensas? Sí. Yo quiero, yo quiero. Pero mi amigo dice ay no. Tú necesito otro vino. Tú necesito vino rico. Su vino rico, sofisticado. Oh, wah, 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 wah. Mi, mi amigo muy difícil, mi amor. Muy difícil. Ok, tú no tienes nada. Quiero nomás. Tú no dices nada a mi amigo. Ay, es tu amigo. Y era All right, get the commercial, get the likes up. Come on Thank now, get the likes. Contributions are appreciated. Let's keep it going. Donate to the super chat. Donate to the PayPal. Donate to the Cash App. It's your contributions and your donations that are cause for this platform to grow. Let our voice be the voice, the preeminent voice in Black America. Five, we got five hundred people in the chat room. Come on, man, y'all got to get the likes up, man. Show me some love, baby. <laughs>
we close come on y'all i want to finish this broadcast i want to get this going man and uh but look y'all make sure you, all i need y'all to do is man just get the likes up hit the like button if you haven't already hit the like button man it doesn't it doesn't take anything to do that but um anyway so we're talking about what uh how will modern men deal with the financial winter you know and because i think man this is something that we need to talk about more all right especially in a time of crisis like this so and, and shout out to everybody who's contributing to the super chat the cash app and the paypal i appreciate you guys um and and and, and i hope that in this presentation it's been a reality now here's the thing there are other cheaper places to live around the world i'm sure that fellow over in uganda is living a lot cheaper than he lived here in the united states so that's also a consideration and you know what let me let me say this first oftentimes we think that when we deal with these women overseas it's because they want to come here i can tell you from my personal experience and my own plan because you got to have escape plans check my check my catalog my intent is to get my citizenship in the same country where my fiance's uh family is from specifically the dr you understand some of you dudes are married to Colombian women. Some of you dudes are dating women from different countries. Make sure that she has her citizenship so that you can get your citizenship in that country. Okay? That way you can be a dual citizen. What does that allow you to do? It allows you to move around. Because there is a coming crisis, fellas. This crisis is coming and it'll be much better to live a place, live in a place where what? Where it's cheaper to live. You get that little social security check and that retirement money and that interest you're making from whatever investments you got and you living off $500,000 a month. Think about that. That's a hell of a plan to have. And you can hide out over there for five, 10 years and live well, live like a king, as opposed to struggling over here. Some of those places, they have very low crime they have wonderful public transportation they got cheap schools that are safe and oftentimes you'll be living in a, a, a country or a community that's homogenous which means all the people uh, recognize themselves as one people when you go to colombia they're colombians dr they're dominicans kosovo they're kosovo you, you see what i mean they're all one group of people and they have a certain unity so they look out for each other they stick out they stick up for each other it's a different vibe than a place like the United States, which is built on competition, which drives capitalism. Every man for himself, every group for himself. That's what that's at the basis of a lot of the, 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 the racism that we call racism, but at, at, it's just group preference. That's really all it is. It's just group preference. I'm going to put my team up. We're going to keep your team down. That's why I tell you guys all the time, racism is a team sport. But the thing is, if you can go somewhere and you can become integrate yourself into some other place and, and become part of that, man, you, you'll get taken care of, especially if you got money. You got your American money and your other and your other location to live in. So make sure when you're dealing with these women, recognize that marriage is what? It's not about love. KS taught you that, didn't he? It's about benefits. Love to come, the love comes later. It's about benefits, it's a contract right can we agree on that it's a contract so what are you getting out of this contract it's a business deal man if you can get a beautiful young woman who can get you citizenship in thailand citizenship in colombia citizenship in the dominican republic which opens the door up for you to go a whole lot of different places without an american passport that's a win for you remember that Okay, that means you can do well, you can live well, you can buy things. I'm, I'm talking to y'all now, I'm on my, I'm preaching, but y'all not hearing me. I'm giving you good game. You wanna always have somewhere else to go, don't you? Of course you do, of course you do. Those of you guys who don't know that, now you know it, of course you do. You always wanna have somewhere else to go. Because if you don't have somewhere else to go, guess what, man? You stuck, fam. You stuck right here. You understand? You might do well living on that $40,000. Uh, 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 you got a, a 401k or something like that. And you can bleed that for a couple years. Take a few years off. 
let this recession go by. Get another place, to, uh, another source of income. It's a lot you can do. You understand what I'm saying? If you have dual citizenship, that's what a lot of these folks come here and do. They got dual citizenship. They from Mexico. They send their money home. Things get hard. They go back to Mexico. They go back to wherever. It opens. It just gives you opportunity. Think like that. That's why I tell you guys, and I used to say it a lot more. You want to think globally, not locally. Okay? Think globally, not locally. This is the game. Having multiple, at least two path, two citizenships, two passports. That's a win. You understand? It's a beautiful thing. Now, I'm not the only one that thinks like that. I'm not the only, and we're going to get back to the things you should do, but I'm just giving y'all an overall game plan because it's important. Okay? I'm not the only one that thinks like that. There's some very successful men, very rich men that many of you guys know. Y'all know who Andrew Tate is? Check him out. Hear what he has to say. Fair use. Fair use. Last two years, I struggle to sleep at night. Literally, what's happening is crazy. I'm an individual with $50 million who can hide and disappear. I want y'all to listen to this man. If you're a man with any level of... Now, a little bit about Andrew Tate. He's biracial. I think his daddy's from Detroit. His daddy's a black dude from Detroit. This brother right here is worth millions of dollars. Travels all over the world. Listen to what he has to say. Shout out to him. Uh, fair use. If you're a man with any level of testosterone level, yeah. and you've been witnessing what's been happening in the world in the last two years, I struggle to sleep at night. Literally, what's happening is crazy. I'm an individual with $50 million who can hide and disappear. If I was Joe Schmo, I'd be scared. You're you hear what this man is saying? This man is worth $50 million and he tells you what, he can hide and disappear. But if he was regular, making $42,000 a year, $52,000 a year, he'd be scared because he sees the same thing I see. But your government's not telling you that. Now get it, fellas. We're going to be laughing at these ladies in the winter, but damn, we might have some frostbite ourselves, though. You understand? Keep listening. You're yeah. out here. They're lying to you about the inflation rate. Where's your panic? Yeah. People are not panicking. They lack perspicacity and they're not paying attention to anything. And they're just sitting there waiting for the fucking steamroller. You think in 10 years from now, things are going to be better? You out of your fucking mind? Mm. You need to prepare for this. Mm. You need a global network. You need a secret society. You, need you hear what he said? You need a global network, which means you need friends in other places. I thank God I have friends in other places. If I needed to dip down to Columbia or to the DR, I got people in place that I'm cool with. I got a network. I have a social network, friends. I've been making friends. Y'all see me going down there giving away gifts and stuff like that. And you think that's just for nothing? Have you not read the 48 laws of power? Huh? I do it for a reason. You give a gift, you make a friend. You give a lot of gifts, you make a lot of friends. Keep listening. Hey, places you can hide you need money and you need the ability to bounce that's what you the ability to bounce you don't have the ability to bounce if you don't have dual citizenship or you don't even have a passport i want y'all to think about that see some of us are so busy with our head to the concrete anticipating what's going to happen the next day we're not looking up and looking around at what's going on around us and that's a goddamn shame it's a damn shame look we're hour in. It's you know what time you know what we do in the hour in. It's time to run roll call. Shout out to all my people from everywhere, man. Okay, I need to know <laughs> where you checking in from, man. We about to hit switches on them, man. We about to switch up, man. I'm about to I'm gonna let the old school uh, 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 hit the ground. We are gonna pancake and 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 front back side to side on y'all. But the most important thing you do right now, roll call. Let me know where you from, Mississippi, Alabama, Columbia. Dominican Republic, UK, Chicago, uh, 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 where else? Uh, uh, England, Wilmington, Delaware. Everybody, man, it's time to check. Hey, time to check in this roll call, baby. Hey, I'm about to show you Thank <laughs> you. 
get enough? <laughs> yeah, big shout out to Slim Thug and them boys in H Town, man. You know I love that that H Town music, man. That's that swinging and banging, man. We letting it ride. But look, big shout out to everybody checking in. My man from Australia said, uh, uh, "Uncle D's an Australian at heart." Good night, mate. <laughs> What's happening, man? Shout out to Australia, New York, LA, St. Louis, Connecticut, Aurora, Illinois, Boston, stand up, Washington D.C., California. Uh, who else we got? London, always. Shout out to the U.K., Ethiopia, East Africa's in the house. Where's West Africa? I ain't seen West Africa in a minute. Arkansas, Dalton, Illinois. Hot damn it. That's what I'm talking about. Georgia, New Orleans. Shout out to the Big Easy, baby. Your urban was added. Lancaster, up there in that high desert. ATX, that's what's up. DMV, Omaha. Man, I've been to Omaha. Omaha got some really good food. Don't sleep on Omaha, Nebraska. They got some really, really good food in Omaha. Really good people up there. Shout out to Omaha. Uh, Belton, Texas, St. Louis, uh, of course, Louisiana, Detroit, New Orleans, D Town. Shout out to D Town. What's happening, D Town? Hold on one minute. We're going to run a quick commercial. We'll be right back. Yeah, I got to answer this phone call. Let me see if I get a good one in for y'all, man. Let me see. Y'all make sure y'all get your Right now, I'm in Boulevard Square in uh, El Centro, which is the downtown portion of Bogota, Colombia. And right behind me, is the um basically just like the justice department it's the place where all the uh supreme court justices in colombia are so pablo had been they the, the u.s united states and the colombian government have been working together and they gathered a bunch of evidence on him and they had enough evidence to send him uh pack into the united states in other words he was going to be extradited all right, I'm back, I'm back, I'm back. So let's go ahead and do this thing, man. I want to talk to you guys about what modern men should do. And I got a couple ideas, and I want to hear what you guys have to say also, okay? Uh, but before we get started, man, we still are short on the likes. What's up? Y'all don't like this? This ain't cool? Y'all don't like the commercials and the lowriders and the fine women and all of that and the shout-outs? And... That's terrible, man. Y'all hard crowd to please, man. Y'all make sure y'all get the likes out, before, but that's what I want y'all to do. And also contribute to the Super Chat, the Cash App, and the PayPal. Here are some ideas for you, though, okay? It might be a good time to start downsizing, right? Preparing to cut uh, out of your monthly spending, right? Do some basic stuff. Car note. Go online, fish around, get the best cheapest car note you can now look there's no better answer than higher prices and making more money but for the purposes of what we're doing right now in the short term go online look up insurance see if you can get a better deal okay it's not a good time to buy cars okay it's not a good time it is a good time to work on paying off that house note if you have one okay now what i want you guys to do is try this here's what i want y'all to do i want you to pay your house note like you normally do and then I want you to go onto your bank account website with this money that you're going to save. And I want you to do something called bill pay. And whatever your bill pay, whatever your house note is every month, I want you to add about anywhere from 35 to 50% 50 on top of that after you pay your note. So what that does is you pay your note and your monthly payment obligation is met. And then I want you to designate any of those weekly payments that you pay off to go directly towards the principal. So what am I telling you to do? I'm telling you to do the same thing I did that allowed me to pay my house off in uh, 11 years instead of 30 years. And I got one of those bad loans, okay? Because I was a young lawyer, didn't have any money, just started my law firm. They gave me a, a loan, I paid it off. But the way I was able to pay my 30-year loan off in 11 years is I would pay my house note, and truth is, I paid it in six years because uh, I got divorced and it was still upside down. So it really took me six years after my divorce to pay off my house. And the way I did it was I paid my note. And then also I put about 50% more on top of that. So let's say my house note was $1,500. I will pay a $1,500 note at the beginning of the month as necessary, as required, and then pay $750 in a weekly basis, maybe like divided up by four or five or whatever. But every week I pay like another 200, 250 bucks and that would be applied directly toward the principal. So what happened, it got down to the point, it was just a little bit of money uh, left that I owe. 
And then I just paid it all off. Bam, that was it. And so that's a good practice that you should start. But again, begin to knock down your notes, okay? Knock down all the plan. You got to do that. Uh, you you got to um, be more conservative on your energy use, okay? Make sure you got stuff in the house that's not burning through energy, right? Um, what else? You got to start figuring out how to get stuff wholesale. I suggest you guys go ahead and um, I suggest you guys go ahead and get yourself a deep freezer, right? And then buy, buy food at a discount rate and store it up. That's what I suggest you guys do. Um, another thing is you want to lighten your overall load. Some of y'all are doing stuff like y'all getting $60 hair court cuts. You're going to have to figure out how to do a little bit better so you can save money, so you can pay off these debts, so you can save. You understand what I'm saying? So you got to start changing. This is what we're dealing with, fellas. A lot of women are not going to be able to do this because they cannot go without getting their hair done and their nails done and all of that. But that right there is going to drive them to the streets, literally. Okay? I see Wall Street is not going to be a savings place for anybody. I know a lot of people invest, invest. Invest in what? When you see people bailing out, of, I don't know. It depends on what you're investing in. And you need to consult with somebody who deals with that on a regular basis. And get good. Don't get your information from the internet. Get somebody who knows what they're doing. Those of you guys who can, time to get two jobs. Isn't that what Kevin Samuels told y'all to do? Get a couple jobs, man. Get it while you can get it. Get it while the getting is good. Find another source of income. I'm telling y'all, man. Might need to start a new, in might need to start a business. Cutting grass is always going to be available. If I went out of business right now, I'd give me a pickup truck and a couple of lawnmowers and I'll be out here cutting grass. $25 a pop, cut your whole yard. That's good money. It's mobile. This is what I'm telling y'all. You go to one subdivision, you make two, three thousand dollars a weekend. That's what I'm saying. It's a good time to get lean too. Get lean and get healthy. Because guess what happens when you're running out of money? Stress. Stress comes. Another good place for you guys. Y'all ain't going to want to hear this. A good place to go right now. If you don't have anything else to go, you still living at home with your mama, you got roommates, you don't have any prospects, might be time for you to uh, go to the military. Yeah, there's a likelihood there will be a war, but not every, job, not every military personnel member is a war fighter. It'll keep you out of trouble. It'll help you do these next five or 10 years that we're going to be doing a hard time. Then you can live well and live safe. And then you come out of it, you got a lot of benefits. I'm just saying, don't knock the military. You have a place to live, something to eat, keep you out of trouble, give you something to do, you learn something. This is for you guys. This is not available to everybody. Women can't just up and join the military like that. Some of my older brothers, you 45, 50 years old, bro, you might just, I plan for things like this. That's why I paid off my house. That's why my cars are paid off. You understand? That's why I got money saved up here and there. Multiple sources of income. But this is what you do when you're young. And that's why I tell you young boys, look, man, don't take on a family until you get older. Don't get married till you're older because you're going to have hard times like this. It's a lot easier for you to do this time if you planned it out and you understand that hard times are coming. Because that's the evolution of it. I remember 2008, we had that, that, that uh, recession. I remember the, uh, the, the, uh, in, in, in the 1980s, we were dealing with a recession. I've seen it come over time. I recognize it and I know what's necessary. You're going to make it. But how many scars and headaches are you going to have? Y'all get my likes up, man. Winter is coming. And I'm telling you how to weather the winter.
Get my likes up. Hit the like button for Uncle D, man. Now, for you guys who have wives, you're going to have to have a real tough conversation with your woman. Because women don't like it when you begin to cut back. But you're going to have to have a conversation with that lady and say, look, baby, I get it. Hypergamy. I get it. You could have done better. Right. But here's where we are right now. That Louis Gucci lifestyle, that hot girl look, trying to cut back. Now, she's going to say why. Because in her mind, it's your responsibility to take care of her and the house and the kids, and her money is for her. And you're going to have to explain to your woman, yeah, I hear you. But what's going to happen is, as things are happening, we all might end up in the street. The best time to be in a, look, let me tell you something. Having two people making money right now, it's a good time to have a woman. It's a good ladies. Let me say it like this. It's a good time to have a man. Men can pretty much make it on their own. You ladies, especially you ladies with children, it's going to be hard. Did you not hear what I said earlier? Did I not run these numbers down for you guys? $32,000 and you haven't even got to the good stuff yet. That's just for gas, rent, car, car note. Huh? Have you have you not heard that? And utilities? You looking at $17 a pound for chicken? Think about that. Think about that. One pound of chicken is $17. I mean, my God, those are price, that's gold prices. This is what we're dealing with. Winter is coming. Winter is coming. So here's the thing. Somebody said my five ex girl. <laughs> my man said my five ex girlfriends are calling me. I bet they are, man. I bet they are. But you brothers, man, you need to get a couple jobs. All men, get you some jobs. A couple of them. Get you a hustle, get you a job. Get you a job, get you a hustle. If you need to, put those student loans in forbearance. Pay as little as pay a little bit though, because you don't want that interest to build up. But we got to weather this this winter storm that's coming. Eventually, spring is gonna come again. But right now, you want to make it through the winter. That's why I'm at with you guys. Okay? I want to see you guys make it through the winter. Hit the, hit, the, hit the thumbs up button, man. We'll be right back. We having a great conversation today. I appreciate you guys. Here's the thing, man. I want you guys to go out and I want you to have a good time. I want you to enjoy your day. Use that noise in the background. Uh, I'm going to cut this a little short right now because I want you guys to think about what I said. There's no need for me to talk long. We've been talking about winners coming all week, right? Y'all get it. Y'all seen it. Y'all seen the video. We've talked about the articles. We, we, we've done the budget. You see what's really happening right now, you know, and I want you guys to be prepared for it. You know, Kevin Samuels is not here to remind you all anymore that winter is coming. Most of y'all don't look on his page and look at the stuff. You want updated stuff, so I'm giving it to you. You know, and again, I don't really talk to women. I talk to guys. And, you know, we sit and we laugh at the ladies because, you know, as far as men, we know whatever comes, comes. We're going to deal with it. Some of you guys are realizing I might end up being homeless. You can deal with it. You see? Women, they really are not prepared to deal with that. And society hadn't prepared them to deal with that. You guys are. Nevertheless, I still want you to be ready. Okay? Winter is coming, and you need to come up with a plan for how you as modern men, all men, white men, black men, brown men, Hispanic men, Asian, purple, blue, pink, black, how are you going to deal with 
this oncoming financial winter. It's going to be painful. You'll make it. But I just don't want you to think, I don't want you to, 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 to be surprised when it begins to happen. Okay, so either way, man, I love you guys. As I always said this time, man, this is Uncle D. And, uh, you know, I'm out.